Hello there and welcome to, yes, yet another video looking at Flat Earth. Now in this video and the next few videos, what I want to do is a response to a video that was put out by a YouTube user called D Murphy 25 27th of March this year called An Open Letter to Neil deGrasse Tyson Regarding the Flat Earth. And in this video, uh, D. Murphy asks 12 questions that he thinks Neil deGrasse Tyson is going to respond to. Astonishingly enough, Neil deGrasse Tyson hasn't bothered to respond, so I thought I might try and answer these questions for D. Murphy. Um, now, like I said, I wouldn't do it all in one video because there's 12 questions and it would end up being a really long video. And now in this first video, I'm just going to go through some of his opening comments before we, I even look at the questions. And the 12 questions he asks, I would say only about maybe four or five of them are actually about the shape of the earth. Um, in typical flat earth style, he's not really able to distinguish between questions concerning the movement of the earth and questions concerning the shape of the earth. They are two completely different issues. Um, flat earthers give arguments against the earth rotating or the earth moving as if they're arguments against the earth being a sphere without when, when they're not at all. So anyway, let's listen to some of his opening comments and I'll give my thoughts on them. So, asking, at what point do you stop, stop arguing things that have been settled for four centuries? Seems ridiculous to me, since nothing in science is ever settled. Everything in science exists as a theory that only stands until a better theory comes along that more closely matches observations. Right, so first off, that is complete nonsense. Not everything in science is a theory. Theories are part of science. Now, people with alternative beliefs, conspiracy theorists, people that are religious, they always misrepresent science, and they misrepresent what a theory is. Now, like I said, not everything in science is a theory. There are also things called facts. These are things that we know to be true about the world, or at least we're about as sure that they're true as it's possible to be as sure as anything. Or it's possible, we're as sure as it's possible to be that they're true. And these are facts or statements about the world, about specific things in the world. Say like the fact that elephants have trunks or that the Pacific Ocean exists or that the sky is blue, things like that. Those are facts. Now, of course, it's possible that we may discover that elephants don't have trunks or that the Pacific Ocean doesn't exist or that the sky is not really blue, but it's not likely. There are an awful lot of things that we're very sure about that it's extremely unlikely are going to have to be revised. One of those things is the fact that the Earth is a sphere. Now, theories are different. Theories are broad systems for understanding large amounts of facts. They're also a way of understanding how facts change over time or how the world changes over time. So they make predictions. But just because the world does the same thing a thousand or a million days in a row doesn't mean that it'll do the same thing tomorrow. And that's why scientific theories are always called theories because they can never be proven 100% correct because we never know what's going to happen next. Just because the world has always done it the same way doesn't mean it won't do it will do it the same way tomorrow. To call it a theory doesn't mean that it's in some way vague or speculative or made up or doesn't have supporting evidence. 
That's confusing the word theory with the everyday use of the word theory. Say, for example, if you're meeting someone and they're late, you might say, my theory is that they've been caught in traffic. That's not a scientific theory. That's just an idle speculation. The theory of gravitation is not idle speculation. The theory of quantum electrodynamics is not idle speculation. It's a comprehensive mathematical system for understanding the world and predicting things that might happen in the future. Same with the theory of evolution or any other theory in science. A theory is not one set fixed, not a, a Sorry, a theory is not a set of fixed facts. It's a comprehensive set of rules and systems for understanding the world and how it changes. Would you have told Einstein not to bother because Newton had already settled that gravity business 200 years earlier? Again, just another completely misleading thing to say, that's not what Neil deGrasse Tyson was talking about. Okay, the shape of the Earth is not a theory. Whether you think it's a sphere or you think it's flat, that's not a theory. Okay, that's just one fact about the world or about the universe. We wouldn't classify the shape of the Earth as a theory. And it's one of those things that is so well established. It, why would people have to keep going back and revising it without good reason? Now, Einstein had very good reasons for revising what we understood about gravity. But also, let me say this as well about what Einstein did, that it's completely misrepresented by conspiracy theorists in general. He wasn't saying that Newton was completely wrong. He was saying that what Newton did was limited. That it was that Newton's theory was an approximation to a much more comprehensive theory. And that the places where Newton's theory worked, he wasn't saying that Newton was now wrong. And Einstein's theory of general relativity just gives you a bigger picture of gravity. It gives you a different concept of gravity as well, but mathematically, it gives you a broader description. But the places where Newton's theory works, Einstein's theory will give you the same answers. Or at least they will only deviate by <clears throat> tiny negligible amounts. So Newton's theories and Einstein's theories are in agreement where New Newton's theories previously worked. Um, anyway, let's go on. I'm sorry, sir, but you're going to have to do much better than that. The resurgence of the Flat Earth is not merely a handful of tinfoil hat-wearing crazies who lack intelligence and teeth. No, unfortunately it's not. It's far worse than that. It's made up of some intelligent people who really should know better and are lying through their teeth. The rest of it's made up of people who are quite desperate individuals who are looking for something or, and are latching onto this. If it was just a bunch of tin tinfoil hat wearing lunatics, it wouldn't really be that much of a concern to people like myself and other people. It's the fact that people that are, that are sane and should know better are buying into it. That's the problem with it when it is complete nonsense, has zero supporting evidence, and is clearly not true. This is a shift in consciousness by ordinary people who have started to re-examine the lies they were told as a child. No, it's just a movement in social media of people who want to believe that what they were told is a lie, because they need because they get some kind of emotional or psychological release from that. They have a need to press a psychological reset button. 
It's kind of like becoming a born again Christian or, you know, and the term, the, the language that flat earthers use reveal this. They talk about waking up when in reality they're slipping into an intellectual coma. That's the irony of it. Your job, sir, is to respectfully answer legitimate questions whether or not the answer supports the scientific model that you are a proponent of. Legitimate questions. Okay, I think the the important word there is legitimate. Traditionally, scientific progress has not solely come out of the scientific community, but from ordinary people with a different point of view. There is some truth in that. Um, <clears throat> there was a time when the enthusiastic amateur tinkering in their garden shed might be able to make a, a contribution to science. It's extremely unlikely now. What those people were reaching was what you could call low-hanging fruit. Scientific discoveries that were just there for just waiting to be made. There's not much left like that anymore. Unless you can build a particle accelerator in your back garden, you're not likely to be making any contributions to physics these days. Not experimental physics. I mean, there's the story of Einstein, who was an enthusiastic amateur working as an office clerk and in his spare time came up with the theory of relativity. But the mathematical sophistication of what Einstein did wasn't really that remarkable. I mean, conceptually, what he did was astonishing. But in, in physics terms, it was actually quite simple what he did. To make a contribution to theoretical physics now, you, you have to be studying graduate level mathematical physics for years to even really get to the point that you understand what the problems are. Never mind propose some real solutions. So the days of the, uh, the enthusiastic amateur making some significant massive contribution to science, it's, it's extremely unlikely. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's unlikely these days. Scientific method demands that you treat each point of view with respect. No, it doesn't. It absolutely does not demand that. It has the potential to overturn the existing model. And if science refuses to even entertain alternative views, then it is no longer science, but a religion of scientism. Uh, no, it wouldn't. It would just be pseudoscience. Uh, this word scientism that people use, they use it completely in the wrong way. Scientism is not a religion. It's not what it means. Um, I'm not going to go into what scientism means, but the scientific method does not demand that every single possible point of view is treated with equal respect. And scientists are not obliged when they go to their place of work every morning to sit down and say, right, do you know what, guys? We're, we've really just, we're not coming up with anything new here. We're probably a bit indoctrinated by science. I tell you what, let's look on YouTube. Let's see what the latest uh, incompetent, ignorant fool on YouTube who doesn't know what they're talking about is saying. Maybe they'll just hit on something, you know? Maybe, maybe they'll hit on something that we're missing. No, scientists are not obliged to do that. And they're not obliged to take ridiculous ideas like the Earth being flat seriously that have zero supporting evidence. There's no point in going over that again because we know that it's complete nonsense. So I would like to ask you 12 questions. Thank you. So he now goes on to ask us 12 questions. Uh, so I think I'll end this video here. Just wanted to make some comments about his opening comments. And then the next videos, I'll go on to discuss some of the questions that he asks.